two o'clock Hope Beauty session today. The celebrity dentist, as she is best known, Dr. Karen Sierra was born in New York City and raised in Miami with Colombian roots. Dr. Sierra is known to many for her role in the Real Housewives of Miami series. With more than 20 years of experience in aesthetics and oral health, she owns Sierra Dentistry and Med Spa and has become an expert in everything beauty and health. Welcome, Dr. Sierra. Thank you so much. So great to see you. So great to see you. So going back, so you're back up and running with your office, correct? Officially today, we were able to be able to start running like a normal dental practice. So as of today, we're officially seeing patients, um, whether they're dental emergencies or just for whatever it is that they need, Botox, beauty uh, services, anything else. Terrific. We're gonna open up with some questions. What Sounds does good. an in-office whitening treatment consist of and does it hurt? Well, depends on what product the dental office uses. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. I like with uh, your introduction of my my background. I have a Colombian background, and we love lemon. We put lemon and salt on everything that we eat. But because of that, you do wear away some of your enamel. So now, depending on the product that the dental office is using, um, some of them will cause a lot more sensitivity. In that. Uh, circumstance if it's a person that does have sensitivity because they ground down their teeth or they brushed very aggressively with a toothbrush then you will have some sensitivity but there's a way to combat that and by actually getting some trays made and purchasing some fluoride some professional fluoride that you can get from your dental office that we sell here you wear that for about a week week and a half sometimes depending on two weeks depending on the severity of your sensitivity that's able to reduce the sensitivity when you do start the whitening procedure, whether it's the in-office or the trays. So for example, every time I wanna do the whitening, I wear my trays and I, instead of putting whitening, I actually put in fluoride. For about two weeks, I brush with a prescription toothpaste that has large amounts of fluoride. That reduces my sensitivity, so when I do do the in-office procedure, I have little to no sensitivity. So. They, like I said, depends on the product that you use, but also depends on your preparation beforehand. Thank you, Dr. Sierra. You also have a med spa there. Yes. What's the most popular body treatment there? To, you know what? One of the things that I invested in maybe about seven or eight years ago was a painless hair laser uh, removal machine and you hear advertised on and not to mention any names but a lot of those laser hair removal places and i had all my friends before describe two types of pain one of them was like if they were being burnt by a cigarette in every hair follicle and i'm like oh my gosh i can't even imagine that and another type of pain was they would describe it as getting a rubber band and just flicking it on your skin and that's how they described that that's how it would, you know, as painful as it would be. And they said that sometimes they would even put anesthetic cream and ice and they would have to take medication. I'm like, oh my gosh, no, there's no need. There's no need. I had researched a machine that coincidentally their website is painfreehairfree.com. And uh, one of my uncles is a doctor in Colombia in South America and he had already promoted this machine to me, he had explained to me how wonderful it was and that by reaching a certain amount of wavelengths with this laser, you were able to treat the hair follicle, eliminating it, but without the pain. So it was interesting because with the salesperson, I called them up and said, hey, I'm interested in your machine. Why don't you come in? And he, of course, like every salesperson, which is normal, they're trained to give you a whole spiel and the whole explanation. I'm like, you know what, you can save your breath if you can just bring a machine tomorrow so I can try it on myself, but I trust my uncle. If he says it's pain-free, it's pain-free. And he was like, no, but let me, you know, he was still prepared to give me the whole spiel and the whole selling. And I'm like, this is going to be your easiest sell because everything that I purchase in the office, whether it's a laser, whether it's beauty products, whether it's my Viora machine, anything that I use for beauty, I buy it primarily because I wanted to use it on myself. 
So I know that it works because I'm not only the owner, I'm also a client. And when he tried it on, you know, he kept on wanting to give me the spiel. I'm like, no, 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 I got this covered. Don't worry. Trust me. If you bring me the machine, just try it on me. Let me just 100% be sure that it doesn't hurt. You have a sale. He couldn't believe it because it's a very expensive machine. And sure enough, he came the next day and I'm like, okay, this is good. No, it works. I got it. Where do I sign? And he's like, and I, I told you this is going to be your easiest sell. If it works and it's 100%, you know, pain-free, then, then I'm definitely getting it. And then that's exactly what happened. And when we've had patients come and do it, they're like, oh my gosh, I wish I would have known of this machine before because sometimes they even have some, you know, some cocktails before going to their other appointments when they used to have, go right. somewhere else. The pain was unbearable. And one thing is doing your legs or even underarms. And another thing is doing your private parts because we have male patients that, you know, they don't want hair. And so, you know, in the private parts, it's, it's a little bit more sensitive, shall we say, whether it's for a man or for a woman. So I think the painless hair laser removal has been amazing because patients, they, they really don't find machines around that in South Florida. All of them are painful except for mine. Well, there you go. Come see Dr. Sierra. Absolutely. Whenever you want. <laughs> Thank you. We have an audience question. Who sure. is a candidate for dental implants and what is the difference between dental implants and veneers? Okay, and can you ask the first part of the question because I couldn't hear it, I'm sorry. Sure. Who is a good candidate for dental implants and what is the difference between dental implants and veneers? Okay, so that's a, a pretty easy question. It, pretty much anyone would be a candidate for dental implants if you have lost a tooth. The idea is, God forbid, you know, patients are losing their teeth. And unfortunately, with this whole situation that we're living in this pandemic of the coronavirus, a lot of patients and is the reason why I've been coming into the office just for emergencies is due to the stress that people are living nowadays. They're breaking their teeth. They're getting these infections. So ideally, if a patient loses a tooth, you want to, number one, restore it with bone. You want to put a bone graft in that area where the socket was wait about 16 weeks normally um, and then you do want to place an implant and that is the time to place it you don't want to wait after somebody has lost let's say all of their teeth for 10 15 20 years and then they want to put implants because what happens is is that the moment that you lose a tooth the bone will start receding the day that you lose a tooth you lose about 50 to 60 percent of the bone around that area now you can't do anything about it at that moment but you can put a bone graft. And then eventually, on a yearly basis, we all lose, as just human beings, we lose about 0.5 to 1% of bone every single year, and that's just due to age. We can't do anything about the aging and losing the half of millimeter to one millimeter of bone, but we can do something about the bone when you lose that tooth at that moment. And that's where putting uh, ridge preservation and bone preservation back in so that when, when that heals and we get what is called osseointegration, the bone hardens around your own jaw, then you're able to accept an implant much easier. Now, the difference between an implant, a dental implant, and a veneer is basically when you lose an entire tooth, now not just breaking it to the gum line, but when the root and all has to come out or has fallen out due to trauma, due to infection, then obviously there is no tooth any longer, not either visible or inside the bone. The root is gone and the crown is gone. In that instance, that's when you wanna place the implant inside the bone, wait until that heal heals, called osseointegration, and then we restore it with an abutment and a crown, and you're able to treat it like your own normal tooth. You're able to floss as opposed to old fashioned bridges that are like three units all stuck together. This is like you're able to treat it like your own tooth, which is the best replacement if God forbid you do lose a tooth. Now a dental veneer, porcelain veneer now is just a facing. And I think the best way I can describe it to my patients, and I hate to use this word, but I think people remember the word, the Lee press on nails that women sometimes put on their nails to make them look longer or prettier. And you can get them at beauty salons. And I hate to assimilate it to that because obviously these are custom made. These aren't 
things that you buy at a store and just put on your teeth. But it's since your teeth are kind of shaped like nails, they have like a curvature on the top around the gum and then they come down. It kind of does look like a na nail, shall we say. So with veneers, we're able to correct on patients. We're able to correct crowding. We're able to correct their shape, the color of the teeth. So we're able to correct a lot of things and we can kind of say it's kind of like instant orthodontics. And it's an optical illusion because we're not straightening the teeth. But if a patient came to me and they had crowded teeth or they had gaps in between their teeth or just their misshapen teeth. I had patients that had braces for three to four years. And after they took off the braces, sure, their teeth were straight, but they had already ground down their teeth before the braces even were applied. So they had really short teeth or really yellow teeth or sometimes the brackets of the teeth would would wear away the enamel if they had it on for too long or if the orthodontist that applied the brackets used an etchant that was maybe too strong. And that happened with a patient of mine, a celebrity, he's a singer, when his braces were finally taken off, when we went to go see, they had these little squares around the whole enamel of the tooth where the bracket was glued on before. And it wore away some of his enamel. So he had straight teeth, but they were yellow. He had ground some of it down, so they were short. And he had abraded some of the actual enamel on the facing, on the surface of the tooth. So these three things, no matter how straight they were, they, it wasn't what the patient wanted. So what we're able to do is by just removing half a millimeter tooth structure. Now we're talking half a millimeter is kind of like the thickness of a paper. You remove that and create a margin so you have something to attach that porcelain veneer and by doing these porcelain veneers and they're custom made to each person you're able to change their shape improve their smile in a very natural way and in a very conservative way because we don't need to prep a whole entire tooth for a crown it's just the facing so we're able to transform patients lives literally and their self-esteem because not everyone is born with nice big teeth uh, I'll tell you, you know, a lot of people have complimented my smile and I thank them for that. And I, I honestly can't take much of the credit. I have to thank my parents because when we were little, boy, did I have these huge horse teeth, but I grew into my teeth and, um, thanks to that and, and definitely wearing braces, I was able to have nice straight teeth, but not everyone's born with nice big teeth. So there's just so many things that you can do, but by porcelain veneers, we're able to transform a patient's smile. And even though you weren't born with nice white teeth or you weren't born with straight teeth or you weren't born with nice, you know, big size in the shape of your teeth, we can transform the patient's smile no matter who you are, whether it's a man or a woman. That has to be so rewarding. It really is. I'll tell you, I have been doing veneers, like I said, this particular uh, patient of mine, he's a celebrity, he's a singer, very well known in the American and Hispanic market. I prepped his veneers about 18 years ago. And he tells me, he's like, doc, there's only one regret that I have. And when he told me this, he told me this the moment I had just given him his veneers. And it's about a week into his having his veneers and he came to me, I wanted to follow up and see how his smile and his teeth were doing. And he goes, I have one regret. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what is he regretting? I was so nervous. And he goes to me, I have one regret and it's waiting as long as I did for getting these veneers. And that, I, when I, he tells me that I just breathed a sigh of relief. I was like, okay, it wasn't me. And he's like, I wish I would have known that this would have transformed me so well. Cause he's a very shy person. If you meet him personally, the moment he gets on stage, he's in concert, he starts singing incredible. You know, he has the most amazing voice, but his self-esteem was being affected because he didn't feel, feel that he had such a nice smile. And now you just see him smiling all the time. And it's extremely rewarding that you're able to transform their physical self, but also their self-esteem as well. Thank you so much, Dr. Sierra. Going back over to at-home treatments, you talked about lemon juice with teeth whitening. What are mm -hmm. some good tips for those of us trying to whiten our teeth at home? 
I'll tell you, there's, um, I go to a lot of, to the American and Hispanic TV channels, TV channels, whether it's their morning shows or Access Hollywood that I fly over to LA every once in a while and give some beauty tips. And there's ways that you can do it at home, especially now with this whole pandemic that we really don't even want to leave our homes. There's a lot of natural ingredients that actually help to whiten our teeth. And one of them, believe it or not, are strawberries. So people think strawberries, strawberries are red, but strawberries contain an ingredient called malic acid. And malic acid is a wonderful ingredient that helps to whiten the teeth. So what I try to explain to patients, there's two ways to do it. You can cut uh, strawberries like in half and literally just rub them around your teeth for about one to two minutes. And you just kind of like if you're brushing your teeth, but just holding on to the, the actual um, strawberry, or you can actually mash the strawberries and literally go ahead and with an old toothbrush you want to brush. Now I always try to tell my patients just because a toothbrush, you a lot of the mentality of most of my patients is the harder I brush, the better I brush, and that's not necessarily true. You want to keep in mind that you always want to brush with a soft bristle toothbrush because you want the, the actual threads and the actual bristles to be able to bend and to go in to the gums and clean and help clean anything that might have gone in inside the gums as well. And if the bristles are too tough, they won't flex and they won't bend inward. So that's one thing you always wanna keep in mind. I promise you that the softer the bristle, the better it is for you, the less abrasion you're gonna have in your enamel and the more it's gonna help. So either mashing up the tooth, the, the strawberries and putting it on your toothbrush, like if it was a toothpaste, and brushing it on for a good, good two minutes and then just rinsing off over time, that malic acid will definitely help to whiten. Great tip. I would have never known that. I know. A lot of people, when I tell them that, they're like, oh, wow, who would have figured? But there's wonderful ingredients in the fruits and the vegetables and the food that we eat that we don't realize have an added benefit. Thank you, Dr. Sierra. You're welcome. Going over to Clear Correct, yes. what kind of issues does that work to fix? You know what? It's, it's been wonderful because with the Clear Correct that we are using, now let me explain to our viewers who don't know, Clear Correct is another form of clear aligners. So kind of like how we call tissue, we call them Kleenex. It's not Kleenex. Kleenex was the brand name that everybody right. just got used to using or botulinum toxin. Everybody refers to it as Botox, but there's also other brands. But it was the first name that kind of came out and it stuck. So that's what we call Botox, whether you're using Dysport or anything else. And same thing with, with um, let's say, Invisalign. People refer to it as Invisalign, but it's Clear Aligners. Invisalign is one company and Clear Correct is another. And if I can save my patients money, I obviously can offer them a better service and they don't have to be spending that much money. And with the Clear Correct, I was able to get a, yeah, be able to pass on the savings to my patients a little more. And they were really appreciative of that. And you're able to correct the same thing, crowding, the gaps between the teeth. We can't change the shape of the teeth, but we can correct any malformations or crowding and things that the patients may have. So with the porcelain veneers, they get instant gratification and they're able to get that improvement of their smile immediately or within two appointments. With the clear correct, it will take a little longer, but patience is a virtue. And with the movements, now with these, you're actually moving the teeth. So you want slow, precise movements. So about every two weeks, we want you come in, you'll be changing your trays. One normally want to see you about once a month. And so every two weeks you change the trays we give you for, for a month. So we give you two sets of trays. You come in, we observe, we see how everything's going. We are actually taking x-rays and you're getting a professional to be checking up on you as opposed to some of the ones that you see that you can buy in CVS and take your own impression. And you hear these things, you're like, oh my gosh, how is a dentist not supervising this? Because sometimes you need to do what is called IPRs, and IPR is called interventions to, I lost you there for a second. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> you're back. Um, sometimes you do need to reduce a little bit of in between the teeth so that the teeth can shift a little bit, 
or we need to place what is called engagers. Engagers are, it's the same tooth color, these little, like let's say these little nubs on some of the teeth so that they, the clear aligners can help move and shift the teeth into place a little bit better. And so some of these that you can take home and you go and you buy at CVS and you take your impression, you can't put that on yourself. So it's like, you're never, never going to get a really good result. So we've been able to see wonderful results on our patients. And, you know, as long as there's a little bit of patience, you will get the results done. So along those lines, we have a question from the viewer. Sure. They want to know, will they see the results from clear correct if I just wear my retainers at night instead of all day? No, I definitely you won't. And the whole premises of it is when we use traditional braces, there's no way to be able to take off your braces. I remember when I had braces when I was young, I think I was maybe 13 or 14 when, when I got braces. And the first couple of weeks, I'm not going to lie, anybody has braces, they'll remember their teeth are sore, they're starting to shift, your gums are sore. But I had to grin and bear it. Sometimes I'd go to the orthodontist and I'd ask him for some wax and I'd place it on the bracket so that they would stop cutting up my gums. And that did help. But I couldn't take them off. I had to grin and bear it. And over time, it got easier and easier and your body got used to it. And over time, the improvement was dramatic. Sorry for the phone. I'm in my office. So sometimes the phone. No, no worries. You're up and running. But, um, but it was amazing that, you know, over time, your body and your cheeks start getting used to the, you know, the movement. And so the pain would start, stop going away, but I was getting the results. Now with the clear aligners, with the clear correct, you do have the option of taking them off. But if you don't wear it consistently, and I try to tell my patients minimum of 22 hours per day, I try to tell them 23 and a half, meaning the moment you eat, you take them off, you eat, then rinse or brush your teeth and put them back on. The more you have them on, you're not giving it laps to go back. Teeth have memory. So when you don't wear the aligners, teeth will want to shift back and revert back to the shape that they were, the position in which they were before. So that's why it's so important to make sure, especially during treatment, that you are wearing this constantly, 22 hours a day at minimum, because that's where, and I try to explain to my patients, we don't want to give it to a, a small child that would normally get braces. This is more, I would say, more for adults that are responsible enough that they understand that by me having to wear it, I will see results. But if I wear it for two to three hours a day, I'm not going to get the results as quickly. Will you get it? You will. But a procedure or a treatment that may last six months on one patient may last a, a year, a year and a half on somebody else because you're not wearing it at the time allotted that you need. So that's why it's so important to wear. And then after your treatment is done, make sure to wear your retainers so that it can maintain your beautiful smile. And along those lines, that's for life, right? You it is for life. And for sometimes what we can do on some patients, we have periodontal fibers, which are like, uh, best way I can explain are like shock absorbers for a patient, for, for a car. So, you know, when you squeeze down, you, your teeth kind of give a little bit. And it's that idea that those are the fibers that are holding our teeth inside those sockets in our mouth. So sometimes when over time that even though the patient wears the retainer but they're not wearing it every day after the whole treatment has been finished, then sometimes we can go into the gum with anesthetic and kind of break off those periodontal fibers and let them regrow again in the new position. It sounds a little bit tricky, it sounds a little complicated, it really isn't, but by reprogramming the periodontal fibers to say, regrow now at this point, not at that stretched phase, then they wouldn't want to revert back because they only know to grow straight into their straight teeth. So that's something that can be done if a patient is suffering and they've already gone through braces twice or braces once and then going to the clear correct. That's something that can be done. And it can be done in a day, a little anesthetic, and by the end of the afternoon, you're fine. So that's something to think about that would also help. What's the total recovery time from that? Um, I would say maybe two, three days as oh. far as you want to make sure you don't floss for a couple of days because since you want the fibers, you, you break up the fibers and you just want to make sure you keep that area clean and just don't touch it. So about two to three days is, is the recovery not as far as pain is concerned, as oh. far as 
being very cautious that no food gets stuck inside and, and we just keep it as clean as we can so that when the fibers regrow, they regrow back into the place that we want it to. Thank you, Dr. Sierra. You are welcome. So moving from teeth back over to the med spa, what yes. are the most popular facial treatments at your med spa? I'll tell you, one of the ones is PRP. So with PRP, it's called platelet-rich plasma. And we basically withdraw their patient's own blood and we put it in a centrifuge. Now, when we do this, we put it for a certain amount of time. When you centrifuge the tubes with blood, you're separating the plasma, which has all the proteins, growth factors, elastin, collagen, and all those wonderful growth factors that we need to look young and to heal much faster. And we separate that from the hemoglobin. So basically when a tube comes out, you see the red, you see kind of like yellow, clear liquid, and that is infused with everything that we need to be able to heal. So once we numb up the patient, whether it's with topical anesthetic or I can actually do dental injections, which are wonderful because it really numbs their whole face um, from their eyes down, we are able to do micro perforations. Now, it's, uh, I'll try to explain this so you understand. When you kind of cause damage to a, your skin, whether you fall and trip, what happens? Your number one, you get a little bit of pain, but after the pain, your blood, you start realizing, you actually see a little bit of the liquid. You can actually see a, lo a little bit of the plasma, which proteins that your blood actually creates. It's like that little light yellow liquid, and it's your body's you know, signal to start healing because you fell and you cut and scraped your knee, shall we say. Same principle behind this whole idea is to create micro perforations. So kind of small damages to your skin, whether it's your face, your decollete, your hands, different parts of your body. So after your patient's numb, we have a micro needling pen that creates these little small little holes. Now, some people call it the vampire facial and Kim Kardashian made it famous with her reality show because of course reality show, which I know all about, <laughs> um, you want drama. And so you wanted to see it with the blood. You don't need to see the blood. You know, once we create these micro perforations all over your skin, you're creating damage. And so you're sending these signals to the brain that's saying, hey, there's damage. I need to start repairing my skin. So it sends these signals to the brain saying, hey, even though I may be older, I don't have the best skin, but since I'm causing all this damage, start repairing, start creating more elastin, more collagen, but the older we are, the less that we have. So by getting the PRP and removing the part that's rich in all these growth factors, all these growth hormones like elastin, fibrin, collagen, and the holes have been made, then we go and insert the PRP back in there. And it's kind of like putting the collagen when you were 20 years old, if you've fallen and you're 45. So let's say you fall, you're 45, it's gonna take a little longer to repair and it might not repair as well, because we don't have that much elastin and collagen that we've lost because of age. But the PRP, since it's getting back in there, you're injecting turbo all these platelet rich plasma, all this growth factors with elastin, with collagen, everything is saying, hey, I'm not 45, I'm 23. So now it starts repairing much faster and the result is young, beautiful skin. Um, I'll tell you, the father of PRP, which is Dr. Arun Garg, who I have had the honor of learning under, um, he is an amazing doctor. He was a, the actual professor for the University of Miami and taught the oral surgeons in uh, the University of Miami that went through there. And he's been the father of PRP. He actually discovered the whole idea of centrifuging the blood and extracting the platelet rich proteins. And he's amazing. And he has published many books on this. And I've had the honor of considering him my friend, my mentor, and learning from the best has been, has been a, an incredible reward for me because you learn the right way, you learn how to do things and get amazing results for our patients. And PRP not just is used for beauty, but also used in surgical procedures, whether it's dental implants, patients that have rotator cuff surgery, knee surgery, where they do the same thing, they remove the PRP and they put it back in during surgery. And it helps with studies have shown that the whole process of recovery has been 
put, like I said, like on turbo boost and patients recover much faster, whether it's a regular procedure, an aesthetic procedure, they've seen that it's incredible how much faster and how much better the results are when we do use the PRP. Thank you, Dr. Sierra. You're welcome. Moving over to the body, what is body wrapping? This is from a viewer. Well, body wrapping is kind of, you're wrapping your body in cellophane and different materials that have epinephrine, have caffeine. Um, and what it does, it helps to shrink, kind of like say shrink wrap the body um, per se, and you are able to lose certain amounts of body weight but keeping in mind, a lot of it is water. So a lot of times you will get that back the moment you do drink a lot of water. Um, I had studied about it. I had offered it in the office and I just saw that it wasn't something that if I'm going to offer a procedure, like I said, I do it always on myself because I want to see the results. I want to make sure anything that we promote in this office works. And I wasn't too fond of it. I, I don't know what other doctors may tell you. But as far as my personal experience, that's what body wrapping is. And I just, I didn't feel that it was a long-term positive result. You may see it and it may be wonderful if you have an event, you have a party, uh, you have a red carpet event and you want to look skinnier, it will help to dehydrate and to remove. But is it long-term? I don't feel it is. So I always want to make sure that a patient wants it, you have to explain the benefits and how long something may last, how long something um, will be a positive influence for you and what are the what are the contraindications for it also so just being realistic correct so good short-term fix yes back over to skincare this is from a viewer dr dr sierra can you recommend some of your top skincare products that you use for anti-aging you look amazing oh thank you well i'll tell you i started using a couple of things one of the things there's so many, if you go to department stores, there's so many products out there and some of them are extremely expensive and some of them aren't so expensive. But what you have to understand is that if you're able to get products, beauty products, skin creams, eye creams at a department store, they're regulated to a certain amount of, of ingredients that they can put in by selling over the counter. So definitely if you're gonna get skin products, I definitely recommend you get them at a professional office because they obviously the ingredients have a higher percentage of the good ingredients that we, we see results with. Now, one of the products that we use here is Derma Swiss. Derma Swiss is an incredible line that we promote here and we use when patients come in to get their facials, when they do their PRP, their recovery serum is incredible. Um, there's their SPF, which you always wanna make sure that it, go, it protects against UVA, but also UVB which a lot of over-the-counter medications and some SPFs sometimes don't. So you always want to make sure that you do have zinc and aluminum oxide, not just aluminum oxide. So I, I, I have a, I, I've tried to take care of my skin. I refuse to get sun on my face anymore. I do, I'm not going to lie to you, every once in a while I get sun on my body, but for about 15 years, I just do not get sun on my face. I realize the importance, maybe a little bit too late, um, of not getting sun in your face and, and how wonderful bronzers are and you can paint it on, you can brush on some bronzer and, and look alive. But um, the regimens, you know, that I've been doing is I will never go to sleep without washing my face. I don't care how sleepy, tired, exhausted I am. That is, you know, there's two things I never do is never go to sleep without brushing my teeth and never go to sleep without washing my face. I think that is so important. And the fact that we live in this beautiful, sunny South Florida, a lot of patients think I don't need moisturizer. We live in such a humid city, and that's not necessarily true. Just because we live in a humid city, and due to the fact that we are aging every single day, we want to make sure that we're moisturizing correctly. You know, we use a toner to balance our pH in our skin. So I think that's extremely important to be able to be promoting to all our patients, make sure you moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. And we have a whole skincare line here, like I said, um, in the office, and we're happy to give patients free consultations. They come in and we can evaluate their skin, but definitely SPF, no matter if you're just driving, people don't realize. And it happened to me one day, I was driving on a long trip and I was in Scotland, I'll never forget. 
and I had forgotten to put sunscreen in my arms. And I had a short sleeve shirt on and I'm driving in my rental car and we're driving. And I must have been driving maybe three hours in the same direction. So the sun was still hitting me on the side. Got off the car and I guess the, the sun was really strong that day. And when I go to look, my left arm was actually red. And I actually did get sunburned through the car. And a lot of people take, take it for granted. They don't realize that it's not just protecting your decollete, your face, your neck. But it's also protecting your, your hands, your arms. So how important it is, especially as time goes on and we're losing more and more of the ozone layer, that we want to make sure that we are putting sunscreen on in our hands, in our arms, you know, any part that's going to be exposed. Even if you're not going to the beach or a boat, per se, even if you're just driving to work, how important it is to just always be wearing sunscreen. Thank you, Dr. Sierra. Along those lines, is there a specific sunscreen that you would recommend? Well, I'll tell you, because I have it here in the office and it does protect it against UVA and UVB, um, I, I use a German Swiss. It's, it's nice and thick. It, it, is, it does leave you on white, so you wanna make sure you spread it on good, especially on your face. We don't wanna have these white faces, but you wait a while. Once it absorbs within 10, 15 minutes, then I apply my makeup and you can't even tell. So I just always make sure that you do have the, the zinc oxide protection because that is the one that will completely protect your skin. So Derma Swiss is the one that I use. Thank you. What about your VIP red carpet facial treatment? Well, that we, we will pamper the patient from the moment they get here to the moment they leave. And that's what my whole philosophy has always been about when I opened up my, my dental spa is let's be realistic whether we're doing something for beauty or whether we're doing something to take care of our teeth you know sometimes there's some pain involved there's some needles involved whether it's in our teeth in our face and i was always a chicken so i always wanted to make sure that i was comfortable and i always had a phobia ironically enough of going to the dentist so i said what can i do to start implementing so that i can feel comfortable sitting in my own chair and that's when we started implementing if our patients are over 21 and they want to come in a couple of minutes before, we give them a nice glass of wine. They can relax a little bit. It just helps to calm down the nerves, whether you're getting needles in your face or needles inside your mouth. And with the VIP facial treatment, we have the oxygen facial when we finish whatever facial treatment it is, whether it's a man or a woman, and we infuse it with wonderful botanicals and vitamins. And we also have these uh, 24 karat gold masks and we have diamond infused masks that are amazing and they just help to hydrate the skin. And I personally went myself to South Korea about three years ago. And if anybody knows South Korea is the Mecca of beauty where these women and all the scientists there have studied everything about their beauty and their skincare regimen is absolutely amazing. So I met with some scientists there and, and recommended snail slug. I know it sounds funky, but it is snail. It's 24 karat gold snail slug masks that we have. And I brought them myself. I bought a whole box um, for my patients. And I'm not going to lie to you. I use it about once every two weeks. I use one of those masks. And it's incredible, the hydration that you reach with these masks. So... You know, there's a lot of perks that you receive when you do the VIP red carpet facial and our patients just leave here pampered, feeling wonderful with a wonderful skin and really good about themselves. Thank you, Dr. Sierra. No what does the thermotherapy vacuum do? Now with a the thermotherapy vacuum, it helps to break up some of the fat and what it kind of moves the skin when we are doing it on the thighs or the abs or the back. We always have those little love handles that you can. And what it helps is the vacuum actually helps to suck up the skin and it helps to move the fat. Sometimes depending on how high we can adjust the vacuum and adjust the heat, the Viora machine that we have here helps for body contouring is one of the heads that we have and the body contouring. Literally, we can adjust how heat, how much heat is applied and how much vacuum is applied. 
And throughout the procedure, you want more vacuum or you want less vacuum because we want to, we want to be able to get all the layers, whether it's the epidermis, the hypodermis, the dermis, you have three layers of skin and the fat in the different layers. So we want to make sure that if we are first treating the fat, then we're putting in a deep vacuum. And then if we want to at the same time, because you just don't want to lose fat, you want to make sure you lose fat and you firm up the skin as well. Then we adjust the vacuum and it's a lower vacuum because now we're treating the epidermis. We're going to treat the outermost layer. So you're getting double benefit by body contouring and elimination of fat, but also at the same time firm with the VOR machine. So along those lines, who would a good candidate be for a lipo laser? A lipo laser, and, and this is uh, one of my best friends, is a, is a plastic surgeon that actually was on the show on Friday, Dr. Daniel Carrieja. And I'll tell you, lipo laser is great, but it's not uh, be all end all. You can't just say, okay, I'm going to eat all I want. I'm going to stop eating. I'm going to stop um, you know, any type of regimen of diet or exercise because I'm going to get a light bulb laser. Well, that's no one. I think that's a legitimate plastic surgeon is going to tell you that's going to be okay because you want to make sure that you, before you do a light bulb laser, that you do start actually treating the diet, trying to get a regimen of trying to develop healthy and better habits. And you start going down weight because just because you're doing lipo laser, they can't remove 100% of the fat that you have inside. So you need to adjust your habits and help yourself a little bit. And then the lipo laser does help. I'm not gonna lie to you, I had it done myself. I had it done about seven, eight years ago. There's sometimes, you know, whether you had kids or not, sometimes you just have a little pouch underneath your belly button that just doesn't go away with exercise, every, all the abs that you want, or sometimes, you know, little man love handles kind of close to the scapula, you know, right back up here. They're not the love handles, they're like a little higher that they just won't, they won't um, go away with no matter what all the exercise you want. So it's for those localized areas, but you can't see it as a remedy just to remove all the fat around your body because it's gonna be unrealistic. Even though you do certain different areas, you can do multiple areas in your body, you have to remember that it's not going to remove all the fat. You definitely want to, whether it's speaking to someone, speaking to a therapist and start training your brain that it's not about just because I have a plate full of food, eating whatever you want, it's about eating not to when you're content, but eating and slowing down your eating habits so that you give time for your brain to realize, hey, I think I'm full. I don't need to eat anymore. Just because your plate is full when we were little, I think we were trained wrong because my mom did not let me stand from the dining room table until the plate was empty. And I think a lot of us can relate with that, um, whether they're Hispanic, Italian parents, or just any parents at all. You know, we don't want to waste food, eat everything. And it's the wrong mentality. And one of the tricks that I started applying to myself is serving myself in smaller plates. Now that we're not going to restaurants and eating out, I don't serve myself ever again. And I haven't in the past, I think, six months. I don't serve myself with large plates. I serve myself on an appetizer plate. And ironically, the brain kind of triggers, it sees the plate full, because I'm, I'm using, I'm, I'm eating the half amount of the food I was before, but in the big plate, it looks really small. But in the smaller plate, I'm seeing this plate full of food. I'm like, wow, that's a lot of food. And psychologically, it's training the brain, okay, that's all I need. And when I finish that plate, I may not be full, but if I give my body time to digest within a couple of minutes, I'm like, okay, I'm done, I'm good. So, so that definitely helps. But just always keeping in mind, you know, you always want to go to a double board certified plastic surgeon like Dr. Danny Cariego, not just plugging him in right now, but because I believe in him and, and all the, all the regimen and all the studying that he has gone through and not just go for price. You know, sometimes you see in advertisements, whether it's dental or beauty products, oh, this one's offering Botox for, you know, for $10, uh, you know, be weary because you never want to go cheap when it comes to your own body. So always keeping that in mind. Thank you, Dr. Sierra. We have a question from a viewer. Are mm -hmm. you able to turn an older silver cavity filling into a white filling? Well, yes, you are. Um, not that you can 
paints over the silver filling, shall we say, but we remove it. And a lot of patients are being proactive now as we educate them that they're not waiting for a filling to fracture or part of the tooth that had these old silver fillings to fracture. You have to understand that these amalgams that do contain silver and they do contain mercury, um, the way they would stay inside the tooth, I'm gonna to try to draw it with my fingers, is with retentive walls. So you would open up here and then you would, with your burr, do kind of like a triangle. So that way the material wouldn't come out of the tooth and you would pack in this material, burnish it, get it to a high shine, and then you had the silver amalgam mercury filled tooth. Now, because you're preparing these walls, these the divergent walls on the inside, you will create stress fractures because you have this tooth and you've created such a way that the enamel on the outside is now absorbing a lot of stress because there's not that much enamel right here and then it you know, develops and it gets bigger on the, on the chewing surface. So a lot of patients, whether they were eating something hard or not, they started coming into the office to, with just fractured teeth. And they're like, doctor, I promise you, I was eating a soft sandwich. And it wasn't the soft sandwich, you know, it wasn't the bread that caused it, it wasn't the eating that caused it, it just, it gave way. It was stress fractured on the tooth because of the way we needed to prepare uh, these, these amalgams to stay inside the tooth that was causing all this damage. And also, if some of you guys are old enough to remember thermometers back in the day, when I was really little in elementary school, I think first or second grade, I remember we had a, like a science class and a thermometer fell. And back in the day, a thermometer fell, the thermometers used to be filled with mercury. And God forbid one fell and broke, they used to be made out of glass. They would evacuate the room, make sure nobody touched it. And, you know, it was like this whole cleaning procedure. You couldn't go back into the room until they were able to completely disinfect and clean around the thermometer. Now, if a thermometer that breaks, that contains mercury, no one can touch, why would we still be placing this in our mouth? Now, there were wonderful fillings and through advancements in technology and the more we learn, the more we study and have evolution, we've learned they were wonderful at that moment because we had nothing else to offer. Nowadays, people are having a lot of metal allergies, so they're having it removed. They're realizing that they're causing these fractures, so they're having them removed. And nowadays, with composite fillings, we're able to remove the filling after we numb them up, we clean everything out, and then put a white filling in there to replace it. And A, you're able to smile, and you won't see these metal fillings inside your mouth, which are wonderful. B, they're bonded in place with adhesive, so you have a much better grip with a filling, and it's more bound to stay on the tooth. And number three, the most important thing, is that because you're not having to prepare the teeth or overly prepare, shall we say, we're not creating as the stress fractures that we were with the amalgams. So nowadays, it's much easier, much healthier for our patients to have these composites. And over time, the metal in our mouth with these amalgams, depending on what we would eat, if we would eat something hot and we would eat something cold, the temperature in our mouth, the, the material expanded and contracted, and they would create these micro leakages when before the filling and the material of the tooth would be right next to each other. Over time, you're creating this gap and the saliva bacteria would seep underneath. And although you weren't having pain and you were asymptomatic, people were suffering and they were having decay underneath these fillings. So when we were removing them, we would see the decay and I believe in tell, show, do, and educating my patients, not just telling them, okay, you need this. So I have an intro all camera and I take pictures once I remove the amalgam so that they can see the decay underneath for themselves. Because it's very hard to put a phone or a mirror inside your mouth and be able to see everything that I see. So it's all about educating our patients and, and teaching them the importance of removing these amalgams and being proactive and not waiting until a fracture happens or until pain happens before we exchange them. But yes, we are going long answer to, to answer your question. We are able to replace them with beautiful white, white composite fillings that look just like your tooth. What about foods? What sort of foods wear away enamel? Well, you know, I, we talked about it earlier in the interview when we were talking about a lot of acidity. acidity. Uh, 
acidy foods, a lot of grapefruit, orange juice, even though it's sweet, orange juice has a lot of acid. Uh, lemons, you want to be careful from a lot of acid. And if you are a lemon lover, you do like vinegar, you want to make sure when you do eat any of these foods that contain these ingredients, that you try to, if you have the opportunity to brush your teeth right away, and if you don't have the opportunity to brush right away, then make sure you at least rinse with water. So you can at least naturally cleanse with saliva and with water, some of the acidity that's inside the mouth. So that's what you definitely want to take care of. Thank you, Dr. Sierra. Going back over to your background, you have you know, family relationships that have followed the same career path. What was it that made you want to go into this field and what advice would you give someone out there right now in dental school? Well, I'll tell you, um, I think it's a wonderful career. I knew I always, ever since I was a little girl, I would always play with a stethoscope and pretend I was a doctor. And I don't know why, it just kind of, I gravitated towards it. I used to love the game operation where you have to like take out these little things from the patient's body. Um, and the more in the, as, as time you know, passed, I volunteered for an orthodontist and I realized, wow, I really like this. And my mom was not a dentist, but coincidentally, we are three girls. I have two older sisters and we're all dentists. So it's kind of wild to, to think that because nobody else in our family is a dentist except for one cousin who's an orthodontist in Colombia, but my parents were not dentists. But I realized that my mom, for some reason, always loved the profession of dentistry. And she says, honey, why don't you look into it? Um, as a dentist, and I admire so many physicians, especially now that they're definitely our heroes, taking care of us throughout this whole pandemic that we're living in. Um, as a woman, you want to have, um, not necessarily, I'm speaking for myself, not every woman, but you want to have a little more independence. You want to have a little more liberty. And so I wanted to be able to not have to be based in a hospital and, you know, have somebody else run my schedule. I wanted that independence to be able to have my own practice and do things how I wanted them and when I wanted them. Um, as you guys know, you know, because of the reality shows on before and other TV stunts, or stints, shall I say. Um, I like TV and I've always done it. I've done Spanish soap operas, done many TV commercials and many shows. And I wanted the liberty to balance both of my careers out. So practice Monday through Wednesday, seeing patients on Thursday and Friday and some weekends I dedicated to doing TV. But being that I have my own practice, you know, I'm able to set my own schedule so that it's comfortable for my patients, but it's also comfortable for me. So anybody that's in dental school right now, I, I commend you. I think, I promise you, it's going to be very rare for you ever to regret becoming a dentist. I never regret it. On the contrary, I've always been thankful for the profession I have because it affords me the time to be able to balance my life and, and do a little bit of everything. And I love my patients. I love what I do. I love my profession. And the more and more I continue to grow and study and learn more about aesthetics, the more I'm expanding in that area. I've been placing Botox and fillers for, I want to say, 16, 17 years now. But you're always learning. And every single day and every course that I can attend to learn different procedures, different materials, um, I'm all for it because I say the day we stop learning or the day that we think we know it all is the day that we die because that's, um, that's an ignorant approach and an ignorant way of thinking. And every single day, it doesn't matter how old we are, it's about always learning and always evolving in our, in our studies, whether it's dentistry, beauty, or, or any, other, any other field. So I think dentistry, especially nowadays, has offered us such amazing, amazing opportunities and technology that before and just up to a couple of years ago, if you needed a crown, you had to prep the tooth for a crown, get numb, take an impression with all this tray and gunk material, then you put a temporary, you had to leave, come back two weeks later, and then, you know, put the crown in. Nowadays, we have an amazing machine. It's called a CERIC machine. And if a patient breaks a tooth or needs a crown, they're able to leave with a permanent tooth that same day, which is absolutely amazing. So if I have patients from out of town that are in hotels break a tooth, they don't have to leave with a temporary. Or patients that don't, you know, time is money. They don't want to have to come twice for a crown. We're able to do the crown the same day and bond it in, cement it in, and they don't have to come back from that crown. So technology has definitely come a long way and has helped us also 
in our practice. And it's been wonderful because patients have seen the benefit of, of coming to this office versus other offices that still do the traditional crowns and, and they'll be a traditional way of doing things. Thank you, Dr. Sierra. So you guys are open right now. Can you go back through your days and hours? Yes, we start at 8.30 in the morning. And like I said, we see patients from Monday through Wednesday, but we're always available for beauty and spot treatments on Thursday and Fridays, and usually until about 5, 5.30. Um, like I said, we're being flexible now. Definitely traffic is much better in Miami, and uh, most people are working at home. But at 8.30 in the morning, we can, we can start seeing you. And sometimes if a special patient wants to come in at 8 because they need to, we're very flexible. You know what? We try to, to work with our patients and, and try to accommodate their schedule the best way that we can. And what's the easiest way for someone to reach you? You can give us a call at our office, 305-665-2033. That's 665-2033. Or you can always shoot out an email, which is Sierra Dentistry at Yahoo.com. Sierra Dentistry at Yahoo.com. Or reach out and you can give us a, you know, you can check out our website and all the procedures that we offer. And if you want to come in, like I said, for a free consultation, for you can come in for a 15 minute facial, mini facial, and we can offer, show you all the procedures that we offer, whether it's in the beauty side or the dental side. We're more than happy to see you guys. And what's your Instagram handle as well? And my Instagram handle, my personal one, my, if you guys remember, my name is Bobo the Team. My mom wanted to be a little original, so it's Karen Sierra. And the office Instagram is Sierra Dentistry and Med Spa. Now, the and, you have to spell it out. So Sierra Dentistry and Med Spa and Karen Sierra. Thank you, Dr. Sierra. And then coming through this time in quarantine and coming back out, you know, continuing out 2020, what's your biggest takeaway? for final thoughts? Well, I'll tell you, you know, with, with all this craziness that we're living in, this new normal that they're calling it, I, I will tell you, appreciating what's really important. I think we've, most of us have seen that it doesn't matter what you have in your closet, all the Gucci's, the Louis Vuitton's, and the money in your, in your bank account means nothing when we don't have our health. And it's about, being a lot more diligent, uh, taking care of our family members, taking care of ourselves, making sure that if you do need to step out, um, whether medical professionals like ourselves or you to feed your kids, feed your families and go to the supermarket because you still need to leave for whatever reason, that you take every precaution necessary. And I get home and when I get out of my car in my garage, I take off my clothes go upstairs. I do not go in with shoes anymore in my house, which is wonderful for my floors of my house because now the marble isn't uh, getting all scratched up with my heels, but also just not bringing anything inside the house. I take a shower or something. I think I'm taking three showers a day at minimum. It's crazy, but, um, but I, I feel better about myself and, and about my mother and, and all my loved ones that I do happen to see every once in a while throughout this whole pandemic. And it's Appreciating, realizing what's really important. You know, the Louis Vuittons, the Gucci's, they're not going to get you anywhere. And, you know, and sometimes we're so frivolous and we just, you know, we're always thinking, oh, we want to be and keep up with the Joneses. And the most important thing to take away from this is your health and realizing what really matters. I sometimes come home and I'm playing games with my mom and we're playing Parcheesi and we're having fun and, and we're spending time with each other and realizing that we don't know what's going to come of this and we don't know what to expect in a couple of months that they're saying there might be a resurgence and an even stronger resurgence, which I hope and pray that that's not the case, but just valuing what's really important and taking care of your body, taking care of you and realizing that, you know, you can buy other purses and buy other clothes, but you can't buy another body. So, you know, make every effort to take care of yourself and, and, and your loved ones, which is the most important thing. Thank you so much. Dr. Sierra, thank you for being with us today and for such thank a great you. partnership as well. Thank you so much. It was great talking to you. Well, and I hope to you. see you again soon. And to all everybody that was tuning in, like I said, we're here and anything that you may need, just give us a call. So on behalf of Hope Living and the Hope Beauty Network, thank you again. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you soon. Bye.